Today, we're going to talk about reasons why not to do planning to protect your assets from the nursing home. Hi, I'm estate planning attorney Richard Barrett with Smith Barrett LLC and one half of the estate planning guys. Today, what we're going to talk about is reasons why, why you might not want to plan to qualify for Medicaid and protect your assets from the nursing home costs. And there are some reasons. You've probably seen videos and blog entries and social media posts throughout the internet about how important it is to do that kind of planning. And here's what you can do, and here are some, ticks, tri <laughs> some tips and tricks to uh, protect your home and protect your assets. One of the most basic questions we get for folks who are coming in to talk about Medicaid eligibility is they say, I don't want Medicaid to come and take mom's house. She's going to go into the nursing home next month and they're gonna come take her house. Well, that, that's a misunderstanding. The truth of the matter is, unless you have a whole lot of equity in excess of six or $700,000 in equity in your home, owning your home, even if you can't live there anymore and are gonna move into a nursing home, does not block your eligibility for Medicaid. It's not what Medicaid would call a countable resource like cash in a checking account is. So no one's gonna come and just take the home. What happens is if you qualify for Medicaid and you own the home, at the time you qualify for Medicaid, then Medicaid will keep a running tally of everything they pay on your behalf, which can be quite a lot. And when you pass away, and when your spouse no longer needs the home, if your spouse survives you, and if you have no dependent relatives who need the home, once all those folks don't need the home anymore, Medicaid may execute on a lien that they would put on your house for the amount they've spent for your care during your lifetime. There may be a mortgage ahead of them. Uh, there may be other reasons why they wouldn't be able to collect, but that's the way it works. So no one swoops in the day after mom gets into the nursing home and takes away the home. But there are ways to plan. We can talk about those, but I wanted to talk today about looking at it from the other angle. What are some reasons you might not want to plan for Medicaid? And one of those is that your estate is too large, really, to uh, to need that kind of planning. So if you've got you know two hundred thousand to maybe six or seven hundred thousand dollars for a married couple it would be easy to dwindle that down, private paying for your own nursing home care at the rate of eight or $9,000 a month. And we don't want to impoverish the spouse that is the well spouse, what Medicaid will call the community spouse. But if you have as much money as two to $3 million or more, you can afford to pay for your own care. I mean, frankly, even if you had a million dollars of assets, you could take half of those and set them aside. And you, with $500,000 cash at the rate of about $8,000 a month, which is close to the average cost of a nursing home stay in the state of Georgia right now, you could pay for your own care using that $500,000 for over 60 months, more than five years, about 62.5 months without needing any extra help or assistance. And that is if you have no income at all because your income, of course, is the first thing that goes to pay for your care. And then you might make up the difference or would make up the difference with the assets you have left in your name. So one reason not to, to do Medicaid planning is maybe your estate is too large to really think about that or to make it necessary to do that. So the other reason to think about not doing planning is I was talking about a minute ago, your income. So you have to use your income, all of your income. If you need nursing home level care, you would gift, would not gift, you would pay all of your income each month minus any health insurance uh, costs that you pay and minus a $70 a month personal needs allowance. I don't know how they come up with 70, but that's the amount you can keep for your personal needs. Other than that, you've got to pay all that income to the nursing home and then Medicaid comes in and makes up the deficit. So if your income is high enough, you may not be able to qualify for Medicaid. Although there are things you'll hear about called a qualified income trust or a Miller trust that can make the difference and help you qualify um, if your income is higher than the limit. And the limit this year is uh, $2,742 per month. There's a way to fix that, but if your income is very high, you just may not need it. Another reason not to plan to protect your assets from a nursing home is if your kids definitely won't put you in a nursing home. Now, a lot of people say that, oh, I'm never going into a nursing home. Sometimes we reach a medical point where uh, it's just not safe for mom and dad to be at home anymore. But there are things that can be done about that, right? If the family is wealthy enough, or you're wealthy enough, or your kids are, you can pay for 24-hour in-home nursing care. It's very expensive, but it can be done. So if you're the family that has the means, and also the attitude is mom and dad should never be in a nursing home, there's no real reason to plan for Medicaid eligibility. 
Another reason to think about not planning is if you realize what planning looks like, most of that planning is typically some form of divesting yourself completely of these assets you've worked for years and years, your whole life to put away. And sure, your kids might be able to hold on to them for you and even use them for your benefit sometimes, but you give up control. And it's really important. I think it's very important that you know and that you think about what it means. If you've got you know $700,000 set aside, plus a good pension and social security, you're divesting yourself of control of all of that for the sake of being able to be in a nursing home, a Medicaid nursing home, uh, which isn't always the most pleasant place to be. It's sometimes necessary, but uh, for some folks it's not. And if you're not ready, if it makes you lose sleep at night to divest yourself of all your assets, you ought to carefully consider whether there's another way to pay. Maybe you would qualify anyway, and you don't really need to do planning. So there is what's called a community spouse resource allowance, and you don't have to memorize that, but the amount of assets that a well spouse, the community spouse, can keep so we don't impoverish that spouse. And that amount this year is up to $148,620. So if you had $125,000 socked away, in addition to other exempt assets like the home and the car, you may not need any sort of fancy planning. You could just transfer all the assets into the community spouse's name because transfers of assets between spouses are exempt from any sort of penalty, and then you'd be eligible. So it's important to keep your eye on the ball and not get too uh, invested in sophisticated, uh, complicated ways to qualify for Medicaid if you would basically just qualify anyway. Another reason is uh, some folks have a uh, an, an ethical or a moral objection to planning for it. And Medicaid is a social welfare program. The idea is that it's there to pay for the care of people who can't afford to pay on their own. And that's a lot of people, right? If the average cost is around $8,000 per month in the state of Georgia for a semi-private room in a nursing home, there's a lot of people who couldn't carry that for very many months without needing some subsidy from the government. But if you have enough, if you've got a million dollars, it's not that we can't do the planning. We can use a special kind of a trust, move those assets out of your name, divest yourself completely of control. And once we get past five years from the time those transfers are made, you'd most likely be eligible for Medicaid. But how do you feel about that? There are some people who object I mean, the truth of the matter is, we, when we help anyone do Medicaid planning, we follow all the rules. Everything that is to be disclosed to Medicaid is disclosed. Everyone can put their head on the pillow at night knowing they've followed the rules and followed the law. But there are ways to get people qualified that do follow all those rules, and we make full disclosure of everything that we're doing to help those folks. But some people hear those ideas and think, well, this program is really for people who are less fortunate than I am, and I don't want to take up any part of their budget for my own care since I can afford my own care. And there's no right or wrong answer there. It's a matter of personal choice. But if your ethical and moral radar says something's wrong, maybe you ought to give it another thought. What if most of your money is in a qualified plan? And by qualified plan, I mean an IRA, a 401k, a 403b. Those tax deferred type of savings accounts are typically under Georgia law, not an impediment. That, that means as long as you're getting your required minimum distributions, and in most cases, Medicaid wants you to get them in equal monthly installments throughout the year. But if you you do that, the required minimum distributions that are coming out count as income towards what you have to pay for your care. But the principle of it, if there's 500 grand in there, the principle of it is not counted as accountable resource. So if like many people, your biggest asset and maybe your only real meaningful uh, high level asset, high worth asset is an IRA, a 401k, a 403b, or another type of qualified plan, you may not need any special Medicaid planning to get yourself to the point of being eligible. And the next reason that you might consider not planning for uh, protecting your money from nursing home expenses is what if you're not going to make it five years, right? A lot of this planning, what's involved to, to save all your assets, is moving the assets into a special type of trust to be looked after by usually family members who you know and trust. Uh, and once you move those assets, you've got to wait out the five-year look-back period because when you make a Medicaid application in the state of Georgia, there's a question that says basically, what assets have you transferred for less than fair market value in the last six months, five years. And you've got to disclose those, but that's what Medicaid's concerned about the last five years. So if you put all your assets into this, a special kind of Medicaid Asset Protection Trust now, and then you don't need to apply for Medicaid for more than five years, that effectively gets those assets out of your estate and they would not necessarily have to be used to pay for your own care. But we do have people come in and see us who are in their 90s, they're 94, they're 95. And that's not to say that people don't live a long life and someone who's 95 might make it five years and live 
live to 102, 105 and get some benefit out of Medicaid, but there is at least an equal probability, maybe more so, that mortality catches up with the person. And even having done all this sophisticated planning, gotten everything uh, divested from your own ownership and control, and in five years you'd be eligible for Medicaid, but three years into the plan, you pass away. That's one of the variables we always talk with our clients about. It seems obvious, but it's important to talk about. We can't control that variable, right? Mortality, morbidity and mortality. So it, types of uh, types of illness that may not need full nursing home level care. Um, so Medicaid may not cover it if it's an assisted living arrangement, um, or if for any reason you don't make it, you don't make the, uh, the five-year waiting period, the five-year look-back period, then all the planning has been paid for and done and done appropriately, but you don't really get it. The family doesn't get a real big benefit from it. So while we are capable of and we are happy to help people with Medicaid planning, you always want to consider things like this once you've talked with an estate planning and elder law attorney who knows their way around the Medicaid system. Take, take a minute to talk with them and ask some questions and think about how you feel about it and what you think about it. If you can really afford to private pay, you might want to do that because some of the private pay facilities are frankly just a nicer place to be than some of the Medicaid nursing homes throughout the state of Georgia. So I hope that these things, uh, these reasons to not do planning to protect your uh, your assets or your income from the nursing home, I hope they've given you some food for thought because when you're making a big decision like Medicaid planning, it's important to listen to the pros and how we can get those things done, but it's important to look at it from the other direction too. Are there reasons not to do it? before you jump in and put a, uh, a plan in place. We're happy to help you think through these kinds of issues. If you want to find out how we can help your family, click the button down below. Let's schedule a discovery call with our team right now. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, then take a moment right now to subscribe by clicking below and turn on the bell notification so you get notified every time we post up a new video. Right now we're posting three videos a week with lots of information about various estate planning topics. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure to stay on top of that. Click below to subscribe and click right over here to watch the next most relevant video about estate planning. Go watch it now.